preview. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and if you're wondering who is going to replace Daniel Cherry the third now that he is out at DC going to work with uh, Kanye West, apparently, um, he was the SVP general manager, uh, was there for, for a pretty short stay over um, in comics where all things are considered. I mean, he, he came and left while Saga was on hiatus, which I think is a new litmus test and, and metric we're going to use for everything. Anyway, DC has announced a, uh, a new uh, replacement. And it is, uh, is, is probably as different of an incoming choice as you could get in terms of the resume in the background. So this is, it's uh, Anne DePise, who will be the new general manager. She has been named Senior Vice President, General Manager, DC Comics. Now, it's really important because a lot of confusion over Daniel Cherry's role. What does that mean? What is Senior Vice President, General Manager of DC Comics actually entail? Um, well, it is, uh, it's basically going to report up to Pam Lifford. So that's the reporting structure, not to Jim Lee. Um, it is uh, that reporting structure goes into Warner Media Global bl Brands and Experiences. So what what does that mean? This means expansion. This means going into global markets. This means new media. It means uh, some of the digital efforts. It means partnerships like um, uh, you know like uh, Webtoon and Tapas and other things they might want to get into. Um, this will be a uh, a role that's intended to, well, as they say from the press release, responsible for the operations, revenue, legal, marketing, brand management, and strategic planning of DC business with a focus on driving DC's international and digital expansion. So many of those same words were used for Cherry as well, for what it's worth. Um, she's listed as partnering with Jim Lee as opposed to reporting to. So it's one of those it will be a dotted line structure into Jim Lee. Now, Jim Lee has a more senior position in the company. So they are peers from an organizational, uh, just structural perspective, but not peers in terms of responsibility. That's very important. So Jim Lee remains the chief creative officer and publisher uh, on creative talent editorial decisions. And Jim Lee will continue to re work with Marie Javins, who is uh, running editorial and running story direction. And so... Uh, and Depies is is not in that not in that pipeline. So if, for example, you're wondering who made the decision to uh, to turn Deathstroke bisexual, it is not Anne Depies. That's probably, that's that's the easiest way to ask that question. No, they haven't made any announcement about Deathstroke. My my point is character decisions are not going to happen there. In theory, in this role, uh, Anne could bring to the table something along the lines of, hey. Um, there's a big opportunity to go into China. We're going to need to produce some products that fit this specific category in this market. And so what does editor, what does creative have for us that we could go and we could do this in? And, and so, you know, that's kind of a decision she could be part of, but, um, and, uh, and Pies has been with the company for some time. So again, quote, and deep knowledge and appreciation of the DC business legacy and people will be invaluable in this new leadership role, said Pam Lifford. Uh, she understands our fans, characters, and stories, and alongside Jim, will passionately build our DC publishing business to even greater heights. Now, this is where, if you look at the announcements for Daniel Cherry, and you just compare the wording, and you kind of look at how all these things go on, um, it, it is it, they are making more of a point to do the partner alongside. With Daniel Cherry, there was much more of the partner with, and even some partner for, Jim Lee. And here it's, it's being described as a more equivalent role. Now, granted it's, um, you know, it's, it's just a very different business, um, uh, very different kind of environment that all this stuff is going into. So some of this stuff is to be expected, but, um, Jim Lee notes that he's worked with Anne for over a decade. And what impresses me is that she gets the importance of story. I mean, Christ, I should hope so, but okay. She understands it is our foundation and has literally woven it, literally, literally you're spending too much time on Twitter, Jim. She has literally woven it into our business plan, which speaks volumes as to the future she envisions for DC. I'm super excited by this partnership and what comes next. Um, so a couple things here. Uh, first off, uh, the news is being taken as very positive within DC. Why? Well, I think there is a question mark of if somebody from the outside would come back in again. DC remains, is, remains, all has been a highly political organization. And so, you know, I think there is this thought process of does, uh, you know, does 
bringing somebody in from the outside indicates a certain X factor in that person's background, who they're going to buddy up with, who's, who's controlling who, and so on. So by bringing in somebody from the inside, by having uh, somebody be promoted, and in this case, Andapais, who uh, has been in this company for a long time working on these properties, she's a known entity. And I think the, the best way to describe um, Anne, uh, at least from the people I've talked to, uh, including a couple texts this morning, is that uh, she is a non-traversial, non-traversial candidate for the role, meaning there's not a there's, there's no controversy around her. There's no big dynamics. She was not seen as a big aggressive political player. She was seen as somebody who generally worked to get things done and had uh, a, a, a profound lack of drama, I think, is, uh, is kind of how she's been described. So less dramatic, um, known entity. Certainly there's always a possibility if somebody comes into the role and they start playing, you know, as they say, big boy games, big girl games, where... They want to play some politics, but there's no real indication of this. And and Anne's personality type seems to be pretty, pretty get along, uh, seems to be kind of the core aspect of that. She is not a uh, fire and brimstone type person, meaning she's not going to come in and, and suddenly whip editorial into shape and demand certain changes, both because that's not her personality and also that's not her job. She's not, uh, she, she will not be doing that job. So... Uh, a lot of creators like her. She's made herself known to a lot of writers. And so I think that there will probably be a lot of celebrations um, online about uh, her coming into the role. And in general, I just, uh, you know, it's about as safe a, a bet as I think you could get. I think that's that's kind of the the upshot here. It's she is uh, she's she's safe. Um, now, you might argue that. Um, and is, uh, you know, a, the wrong person for the role because what the company needs right now is a big shakeup. Um, you know, if you're shaking up a company, there's a possibility it shakes up for the better. There's a possibility it shakes up for the worse. When a lot of things are very fragile inside the company, bringing somebody in to shake it up for the worst can certainly accelerate you to the end. And sometimes that can be a relief, but not always the best business plan. I'm talking from a corporate perspective. Um, I think I, I've already seen some people start to describe her. I mean, I'm saying some people, I mean, you know, fans, customers describe her as a yes man, somebody who's not going to do anything, keep the status quo. Again, I'm not sure exactly what people were looking for in terms of this particular role. This role, as mentioned, is going to go out and look at kind of brand management, portfolio management, strategic planning. This this is not the, what what wouldn't be in her responsibility would be we've got too many Batman books or why is our, you know, why is our, you know, why are we losing our good artists? Now with the interesting part of this with uh, legal, uh, there's a possibility she could step in and say, why are some of our full-time employees acting like crazy nutcases on social media? In theory, she could have that responsibility. She wouldn't have direct line reporting, but she could certainly set a standard. So that's something she could do and probably should do. And then on the marketing side, there's, just a bazillion this probably if, if I was to state one negative about her going into the role and, and it would be that DC marketing needs a massive uh, adjustment and needs to improve a lot since she's been um, more or less kind of in that world um, I don't have a lot of optimism that things change on the marketing front but I but I hope so uh, her last position was senior vice president global brands and franchises um, you know, that's, that's, she used to do acquisitions and M&A across Warner. Um, it, it, she probably has a lot of good connections to get some of these partnerships done. And I expect with where the company's at and where they're going, that's where her attention will be focused. So I don't think we'll, we'll hear much of her in terms of news. Um, again, you know, somebody who knows the business is good. It is interesting watching some of the commentary, uh, particularly with some news sites where you can absolutely tell who they like and who they don't like who their, who their, uh, allies are, who leaks them news, uh, because there's this, uh, this expression from a couple of them as they're giddy that she's coming into the role and, uh, that Daniel Cherry is gone. And, uh, because you know, it, it, it fits with a certain click. So I, you know, it's one of the negatives about getting somebody from the inside, but all things considered, chances are, uh, she'll come into the role. We won't hear much about her for, you know, a while for, for a year and a half, two years. 
hopefully they'll be able to open up some things on the international side, get their digital house in order, which would be nice. And then uh, on the marketing side, just for love of God, stop the stupidity. That's, that's where they absolutely need some massive, massive changes. So hopefully that, that we can get there. Uh, but there you go. If you're wondering, you know, what would happen with Daniel Cherry's exit, who would replace him? Here's your answer. Um, in terms of who's going to write the ship from an editorial perspective and, and really kind of fix up the stories and some of the storytelling they're doing, that, that job, that, that attention still belongs to Marie and Jim. So hopefully they're doing their part to focus on all this. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.